Thank you, Robert. It's great to be here. And uh, when you were announcing me, actually, uh, I sounded much uh, older than I actually feel. Um, but but it's, it's great to be here in uh, Milan, in the heartland of uh, uh, one of the capitals of, Euro of European Union in respect of uh, industry and manufacturing. Uh, the great wealth we can, which we can see out there is actually a result of uh, the excellence of Italian manufacturing. So I think we are here in the right place to discuss uh, key issues and the challenges which we are facing. Just a couple of, we, we, we've been probably watching um, the, the, the football championship and uh, you've seen the results of, uh, of, of, the, of the matches yesterday. And actually it reminded me of uh, uh, an interview which I run, once read, not about the, from the football player, but um, uh, from the hockey player. And uh, he was asked, what are the key characteristics of uh, an excellent hockey player and a good hockey player. And uh, this guy said that the good hockey player is where the pack is. And the excellent hockey player is where, is that the, this excellent hockey player is not where the pack is, but where the pack is going to be. So one of the questions which we are here to, uh, which we need to address here today is, uh, are we excellent players or are we good players? Are we in the place where the name of the game is or are we going in the direction where the new challenges and new opportunities are going to be? And ladies and gentlemen, I think the World Manufacturing Forum is really the right place where we can discuss these issues, when we can look at the current developments of the sector and where we can actually look at the future challenges which we are facing. And of course, the, the key discussion of, uh, the, the key focus of discussions which we're going to be is uh, the industry, the challenges which industry is facing, and uh, the direction in which we are going. And as you know, the industry is really the, the engine of the economy. Just one key figure which we should bear in mind is that the 65% of the investments in R&D comes from the industry. And let's compare that to the less than 15% of the GDP which is generated, generated by the industry, which means that really a, a, small, a small fragment of our overall GDP really is boosting innovation and growth, not only in European Union, but throughout the world. If you look at some key figures from the European Union, uh, we have in Europe around 32 million people uh, directly employed by, by manufacturing sector. And in addition, about uh, 20 million jobs indirectly depend on manufacturing. And even more, if we uh, look, for example, at the growth which is generated by manufacturing, one additional job in manufacturing actually contributes or directly leads to two jobs elsewhere in the economy. So industry has done huge effort uh, in productivity, notably supported by the wider adoption of different technologies, or of course, digital technologies as well. So if we are looking for boosting and creating uh, a job-rich recovery, the key thing to look at is the factor, the industry. So European Commission in this respect is working very closely with the member states in order to look at the policies uh, for what we call the reindustrialization uh, to maintain a strong and, in, and, and very uh, consistent industrial base in Europe. Uh, Vice President Tajani, who is responsible for industrial policy, said what we need to do is we need to reindustrialize the 21st century, we need to reverse the current downward trend in Europe, and we need to, we need to bring industry back to Europe. So the legacy of the crisis is in Europe very severe. severe. As you probably know, by 2008, uh, from then to now, we lost about 3.5 million jobs uh, in manufacturing in Europe. The share of manufacturing GDP has fallen to 15% in the last year, and the EU's productivity performance continues deteriorating in comparison to our competitors. In these recent years, Manufacturing output has declined in a number of member states, let me just mention Netherlands, Italy, United Kingdom, and Spain. 
So this is exactly why in European Union we said very clearly that we need to increase industry's contribution to the GDP from current 50% to 20% by 2020. But it's not that gray. Europe's, Europe has a number of competitive advantages. Uh, for example, uh, when we compete today, we need to innovate. Uh, we have to look at the, the, the negative sides of where we stand, and also we need to look at the positive sides. In industry, as in many other sectors, innovation comes increasingly from ICT, and this is exactly why one of the focuses of uh, Europe's 2020 growth for, and job strategy was actually to look at digital technologies. We try to address digital technologies from different perspectives, looking from, from, from for example, uh, creating new products and services, uh, transforming pow uh, power and growing impact across different sectors by redefining traditional businesses and products. And I think through that, we have redefined the contribution of the digital uh, economy uh, in industrial manufacturing. At the same time, digital economy and digital transition is underway uh, in uh, a number of other sectors. Uh, and I think from that perspective, there are a number of opportunities which are out there, ranging, for example, from cloud computing, from big data, from data value chain developments, new industrial applications of internet, smart factory, factories, robotics, 3D printing and design, and so on. So a strong and proliferating European ICT supply base is one of the growth, growing, is growing, uh, growingly important in Europe. Manufacturing is also the largest industry uh, market segment for enterprise IT, and it offers the largest potential market for cloud computing. So keeping the industrial base in Europe will further emphasize the key role of physical production in unlocking innovative revenue streams. ICT can also help us uh, develop new products and services, create value, and design better products, whether it's integrated in the product or by improving different processes. And we are doing well. With 30 to 40% of the global share, Europe to date leads the world in industrial robotics and factory automation, embedded in digital systems, enterprise and design software, and 3D and laser manufacturing. But the challenge is, is to stay ahead, to position ourselves in the right place. We need to seize the opportunity. That means also supporting a wider uptake of radical new ICT, with every industrial company using ICT to the full, and also to improve competitiveness and reach its full capacity. And a strong digital industry able to help the EU uh, industry to innovate and to respond to the global mar market. And as I said, I know that uh, European industry faces major challenges and disadvantages internationally. Let me just mention the higher energy cost or dependence on imported raw materials. But this makes it even more important that, the maxim that we maximize our advantages. An innovative, creative, skilled workforce, qu uh, quality ICT infrastructure, and the will to innovate and to improve. So let me just look at very briefly of these issues. First of all, innovative, creative, skilled force. We look at the, some figures today and we know that in next few years, we will be missing around one million skilled workforce in Europe. This is exactly why we put in place Grand Coalition for Digital Jobs in order to get more people in the ICT with, with uh, relevant ICT skills, which will help us improve our ICT industry, uh, our industry. Also, Europe needs new infrastructure. That's why we put in place what we call the con uh, connected, uh, connected Europe uh, a proposal uh, with the objective to build up uh, a new competitive uh, ICT networks across uh, European Union. What we want to have is a telecom single market which will guarantee that the services and networks will work across the borders in the most effective and efficient way. So, ladies and gentlemen, in Europe we actually try to put together a number of very important factors which will keep us, help us uh, increase our industrial competitiveness. Essentially, it has three main directions. First one 
is we would like, we are building a partnership with industry and in academia with a series of public-private partnerships. Most notably, of course, you know the factories of the future, which we put in place years ago. Now we are in the Horizon 2020 work program. Uh, we are putting together uh, more than uh, 1 billion euros per year, uh, sorry, in next seven years. And thanks to this partnership, uh, we will boost research and innovation in this very important domain. However, you should not forget also all the other public-private partnerships which we put in place, which are contributing to the same agenda, most notably the public-private partnership of robotics, on the photonics, and also on the future internet. Second, we need to address also the value chain and the whole innovation chain, from basic materials to final cons consumers, from lab to market market pull as well as the market uh, technology push. That means the industry and services across the value chain cooperating. It means also stronger networks between industries. It also means integrating international value chains and of course, research and development cooperation. Yet today, many smaller businesses can't use this innovation to, fu uh, to the full. They don't have the resources and the knowledge or the capacity. This is why we have uh, put in place what, I, what we call uh, ICT innovation for manufacturer SMEs, uh, which actually offers 77 million euros for networks uh, of competence centers, helping them to link uh, with access to technology, competencies, and new markets. Third and most importantly, what we have to do in Europe is we, we have to make our policies work better together such as how to put the right policies on security and data protection, for example, and they could really help a lot. Or even more specifically, how to put together EU regional funding and smart specialization, and how they can work alongside the research innovation spending. So by connecting regional and national policies for pooling resources, we can really reach critical mass, align strategies and policies and build the right links between the hubs of excellence and regional clusters. So no fewer than 45 regions have put advanced manufacturing as a priority for EU structural and investment funds. That really offers a major promise. It means that the structural funds could build the capacity and infrastructure to oxygen, uh, the, which, are the oxy which is the oxygen uh, for research and innovation boosting. So in European Union, it's clear that we work better when we work together. And this also stands for working with our international partners. This is exactly why we are committed to international cooperation, whether bilateral or multilateral. We should know that we put on table what we put on table and what we can get from it. In the next presentations, we will hear, of course, the contributions and, uh, uh, to, the, to the common objectives uh, from the United States, South Africa, Mexico, and Australia, and I'm looking forward for hearing more. Uh, from the Commission, there will be two services who will participate in the forum. One uh, service will be the, uh, our colleagues from uh, DG Research and Innovation. Director Clara de la Torre is sitting here in the first row, and together we're her, with uh, her colleagues, and also my colleagues from uh, DG Connect uh, Khalil Ruana will be here today. So we have very high expectations from the World Manufacturing Forum discussion, and we are looking forward for engaging with you. But of course, the outcome will depend not only on the speakers, but on your personal engagement and contribution to the discussion. So ladies and gentlemen, let's make the best out of this. Thank you very much for your attention. So good morning, everybody. My name is Marco Teich. I'm the scientific chairman of the World Manufacturing Forum. And together with uh, colleagues of the program committee, we have set up this, uh, this event and this program. We hope that you will like it. Uh, does manufacturing really matter? Or what is going to be manufacturing in the future? These are two of the questions we would like to answer 
during these two days, and these are the questions that uh, our speakers would like to help us to understand and, and answer. We heard that manufacturing is very, is very important uh, uh, in, uh, in Europe and all over the world. There are more than 300 million of people working in, in manufacturing, which means that it's 14% of the employment all over the world is in, in this uh, area. Uh, we heard that GDP share of manufacturing is going down. It's 17% now in the world. It was in the 1970s, it was 27% uh, was much, much higher. But on the other side, there are companies are claiming or complaining that they are not able to fill 10 million jobs due to the fact that they are not able to find the right skills, the right knowledge, and the right, and the right competences. And, and competition is, is growing. It's not anymore competition between companies. It's becoming competition among countries, uh, among ecosystems all over, all over the world. And, and new technologies are coming. So all of this makes manufacturing very important, makes manufacturing hot topic. We heard that this is now part of the uh, governmental policies. The European Union uh, has raised this in the Horizon 2020. We heard that uh, more than 1 billion euros will be used for support the development of innovation in the next uh, seven years. Uh, President Obama, uh, in 2013 and 2014, in his uh, addresses to the State of the Union, he said also that manufacturing is important. There is, he asked to the Congress to support this with more than 1 uh, billion uh, euros, uh, um, US dollars, sorry, for launching this. Uh, but the problem is, where are the direction and where are the pillar or the factor for competitiveness? Uh, there is a very interesting uh, survey which was made asking CEOs of 500 companies all over the world where they think uh, should be the factor of competitiveness. And the first answer, the first topic was talent-driven innovation. Talent and innovation. So around these two pillars, we have built the program of this, uh, of this event. And uh, in fact, in session one, we are going to and you are going to listen what are the policies for manufacturing in the future of, uh, of manufacturing. Uh, we have, and you will have the chance to see what are going to be the challenges of manufacturing. This will be, and you will have the chance to learn this from uh, uh, industrial leaders. We said that skills are important, education is important. We have to fill these 10 million gaps. That's why in session three, uh, we are going to study and understand what kind of education is needed for, for the future and how we can provide this education. How can we attract younger people, younger talent to study uh, education? And finally, for today, uh, if we want to have innovation, we need to support innovation with money, with funding. There is a lot of discussion of venture capitalists in IT, but what is the role for this in the manufacturing? We, you will listen to best practices, to companies who have been working in this area, and they can be able to share their experience with you. And this is for today, but the event is last tomorrow as well. Don't forget, please come back tomorrow here. And uh, we will go into more technological uh, sessions uh, we are going to discuss about how robotics can be helpful for the SMEs. They are the backbone of the economy in many uh, countries. We are going to discuss how standards can improve the competitiveness of the company. And finally, there is a lot of discussion about IoT, smart manufacturing, cloud manufacturing, big data. All of this means that manufacturing is going from a physical world to a digital world, but this is creating a threat, how to protect our information, how to protect our data, and this is the topic of session number seven. And finally, last but not the least, we want to close the event with an outlook into the, the future, and that's why we will listen how and the environment is changing and what are the most promising technology and how we should do innovation for, for the future. We hope that this will be helpful for the policy uh, makers. Uh, we hope 
uh, that this will be helpful for the leaders of the company who are sitting here in this uh, forum. That was the goal of, our, of the program committee. This was our challenge. I hope we have been able to uh, be successful with this. And thank you for coming. And uh, I wish you two intense working days. Um, I would like to invite Mauro to now chair uh, the, the forum and chair the first uh, session. But before this, just two brief uh, maybe logistic in information. Uh, this is important for, uh, for you. Coffee breaks are served upstairs, so there are two stairs over there. You have to, and the hostesses will drive you, and these are the coffee break will take place behind the, the, the blue uh, curtains over there. Lunch is served downstairs. You have to go that direction to go downstairs. We have 18 tables from our sponsors. They are showing their last uh, innovation, the last result of the research. All of you are kindly invited to visit them during the coffee break and during the lunch time. Thank you very much.